Hey there, it's your friend and your guy and your favorite Steam Deck fanboy, Gardner, the Linux gamer. I was gonna post a video on Saturday, uh, and then I said, no, nah, I'm gonna do it on Sunday. But the problem is I got way too into the weeds playing games on my Steam Deck. Yeah, I have a Steam Deck. If you haven't seen the video, uh, my initial impressions and stuff, go check it out. The video was posted on Friday. See, I spent all weekend playing games on my Steam Deck and poking and prodding around the OS, around the UI, and like I said in my hands-on first impression video on Friday, the software is unfinished. And because of that, I wanted to go over 10 of the most obnoxious, missing or incomplete features that uh, I've encountered on the Steam Deck. Now, this is not me uh, being like unfairly critical. This is not me saying that I don't like the deck. Uh, this is literally my favorite piece of gaming hardware that has ever been released. This is a game changer. And the criticisms I am levying here are only to make this even better than it already is. And also keep in mind that this thing, the software on this thing, is a living beast. Like, if you're watching this video two months from when it was originally published, then there's a good chance most of the issues that I'm talking about here have already been fixed. Or if they're not fixed, then things are just different than they were when I made this video. Uh, in the last few days, I've had this deck in my hands. Valve has released at least one update a day for Steam or for Steam OS, and uh, things have, are changing right underneath my feet. And before we jump into the list, make sure that you subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with all of the Steam Deck coverage that we're doing here. Uh, my team and I are so excited about the Steam Deck, and honestly, we couldn't be more stoked to have the genuine article here in our hands, so get subscribed to stay up to date with all the content that we're putting out about the Steam Deck. So uh, with that being said, let's talk about some of the things that uh, are just driving me nuts about the Steam Deck. Okay, the first thing that's been bothering me with the Steam Deck is that we don't really have a choice of where to install software. I mean, yeah, we do have a choice. So you can go into the settings and then you can go to the uh, storage section and then go to the install location and set the default. And then you can go to your Steam library and hit install. But really that's a terrible workaround. I would prefer an option where, when we're focused on the install button, we would see a prompt at the bottom of the screen that would say, X, choose install location. And then pressing X would actually allow you to choose uh, which storage you wanna actually install to. That would be so mint. And honestly, they're almost there. Like I have the 512 gig model and I've already filled up a lot of the internal storage. So when I went to install a game and the deck realized there wouldn't be enough space in the default install location, it prompted me to pick somewhere else. All they need to do is make pressing the X button bring this menu up and they're golden. Speaking of the install location, right now there are two ways to move a game between the SD and internal storage. You can go into the storage tab in the system settings, find the game you want to move, and then go through the process of starting the move. Or you can open the game's properties from your library, go to the local files tab in a game's properties, and select move install folder. These are both serviceable ways of achieving the same task. However, this is functionality that I have been using frequently enough to find both of these options tedious. Instead, I propose adding a move install folder entry to the options menu under the manage tab. And while the title move install folder makes enough sense, I don't like this term. Change storage device or change install location would make much more sense for the Steam Deck in my opinion. Finally, while I'm ranting about install location, a small quality of life improvement I'd really like to see is being able to sort my deck's library by install location. Being able to sort by games on internal versus SD card would be truly awesome. Speaking of sorting your library, I'd really like to be able to filter my library by a specific deck verified rank. Right now you can show verified, or you can show verified and playable, or you can show verified, playable, and unknown, or you can show all titles. But I'd really like to be able to see just the playable games or just the unknown games. Similarly, I'd like to be able to filter by deck verified rank in the store. All right, the fifth thing I'd like to see at the moment, if you're plugged into an external monitor and you're in the deck UI, there doesn't seem to be a way to change 
the resolution. Right now, it just defaults to the external display's native resolution. This is more or less fine when it comes to plugging into like a 1080p display, but the deck seems to struggle a bit pushing a 4K image to my living room television. Being able to control the output resolution from within the DeX UI is a feature I think is incredibly important. It would also be nice to have a render resolution and an output resolution feature that worked per display. The way this would work is that games would automatically pick the render resolution rather than having to change each game's settings. This in concert with enabling global FSR would be a killer feature. All right, let's switch gears now. Number six on my list of missing features is a glaringly obvious omission. As someone who has thoroughly enjoyed the big picture mode experience over the years, I find it quite perplexing that Valve omitted one of the single best innovations big picture mode had to offer, the trackpad driven virtual keyboard. In big picture mode, if you had a Steam controller connected, you could use a thumb on either trackpad to point to a letter on one half of the virtual keyboard, then use the L or R triggers respectively to select that letter. It might not be clear through this video how great of a typing experience this is over the hunt and peck method of using a joystick and a focus ring to type, but it truly is. The trackpad driven keyboard experience is just as natural as typing on a smartphone's virtual keyboard. It's also orders of magnitude faster than a joystick driven virtual keyboard, and I seriously can't understand why they would ditch such a superior way of typing on the Steam Deck unless they simply didn't have enough time to implement it. Now, I can't overstate how much I want this feature here. Uh, if no other feature on this list is implemented, this is the one thing that I want the most. Speaking of trackpads, let's talk about haptics and rumble. In big picture mode with the Steam controller connected, you could adjust the amplitude of the haptics. This is something that I would really like to see on the deck. Importantly, I would like to have two independent adjustments, a slider that controls the strength of the haptics for the touchpads, and another that adjusts the strength of the emulated rumble. While they're both using the actuators in the touchpads to provide this tactile feedback, these are two separate things in software, as evidenced by their distinct toggles in the quick settings menu. Being able to adjust these two separately would be great, and perhaps adding a way to set two values for rumble emulation based on if you're touching the trackpad or not would also be in order. I think this is important as if you're touching the trackpad with your thumb, your thumb is going to absorb most of the vibration. I know power consumption is a consideration here, but Valve has shown that they are keen to give us control over battery usage on the deck, and this is just one more tweak that we should have control over, in my opinion. As someone who is chronically forgetful and not particularly detail-oriented, I have found myself wanting to do testing and benchmarking on the Steam Deck, but I find that I'm just not good at it. I'd really like to be able to have usage statistics collected and presented in a nice UI. I'd like to see metrics like playtime stats broken down by title, alongside power consumption over time, performance options that are enabled or disabled, etc. Playtime is already being collected, but we don't have a way of actually visualizing this data beyond 2.8 hours played in the last two weeks. Meanwhile, over a decade ago, the 3DS had a feature a lot like this. It would show how much we've played over time and whatever else. I'd love to have a way to enable this kind of automatic usage stat collection, even if it's just being able to see playtime for a game and battery percentage over time. I could figure the rest out on my own. Mostly this is because I'm pretty lazy and I'm not very good at remembering to start and stop timers and jot down numbers. So if Valve, if you could fix this and, and implement something that would help me out here, that would be greatly appreciated. <laughs> All right, let's talk about non-Steam games. Right now, if you go to the non-Steam section of your library, you're prompted to install Google Chrome on the deck. Now, this is a very nice feature, and while I would personally prefer to have Mozilla Firefox, I can understand why Valve went with Chrome on this one. That might come as a shock to anyone who's familiar with my YouTube channel. I don't like Chrome or Chrome-based browsers, but, I really think that that was a, a savvy move on Valve's part. Most people are just familiar with Chrome, but I think that it goes much deeper than that. See, Chrome supports a feature that Firefox recently abandoned, progressive web apps. Now, I know that a lot of folks roll their eyes when they hear me or anyone else talk about PWAs, but they shouldn't. Discord is not much more than a PWA that you have to install. Spotify, too, is a PWA. 
Most of the apps that you install on a streaming device like a Roku or an Android TV are PWAs. And near as I can tell, even the Steam Deck UI is running on PWA technology, namely HTML and CSS. But PWAs don't have to be installed via an executable. If you open a website like Twitter, for example, in a browser that supports PWAs, you'll be prompted to install a website as a PWA. You can do this on your phone as well. When you do, you'll get a desktop icon for your app, and when it's launched, you'll have a dedicated window for that app, and special OS-level features are unlocked. Features like native system notifications, running as a background process, and others are made available to PWAs. And I think that the Steam Deck should be supporting installation of such apps. Being able to add streaming services like Netflix, Hulu, YouTube, and Disney Plus would be awesome. And treating PWAs as first-class citizens is something that Valve should really seriously consider on the Steam Deck. It would instantly provide a ton more functionality to lay users without these services having to publish apps on the deck. And I really think the deck would excel at streaming content. Speaking of media playback, the Steam menu has the Media tab, which is basically a way to manage screenshots at this point. Now this is cool and really convenient, but I feel like it should do more. Specifically, it should be able to play music, either game soundtracks like we have in the desktop Steam client, or also music from our own collection. Maybe even something like Spotify, if that's installed as a non-Steam title. Especially when you consider that the deck not only has great speakers, but it also has excellent Bluetooth and wired headphone support. Now, that was number 10, but I actually want to leave you with a bonus. I think this is kind of a pie in the sky idea, but it would be an absolute killer feature that I think would be awesome to see on the Steam Deck. Steam Workshop mods for the Steam Deck's UI. Now, I don't know how realistic this idea is, like I said, but if Valve exposed a plugin API for the Dex UI, that would allow so much potential for awesome customizations. For example, Discord or other services would be able to add quick access menus, or we'd be able to see tweaks for the game scope overlay. Or maybe you'd be able to add new button cords that do X, Y, and Z, new filters built into the library, or any other number of tweaks. The possibilities would be endless. Now, obviously, mods like this would have certain performance implications, and there would have to be some work done to mitigate the potential for malicious plugins, but it would be really cool to see. And the thing is, we haven't really needed anything like this on desktop Steam because we typically have mouse and keyboard driven multitasking on the desktop, and it's dead simple to do whatever else outside of Steam. But on a device like the Steam Deck, where multitasking is just a more difficult user experience issue to tackle, I think Valve adding a plugin API would be a great option for external services to integrate and allow for multitasking within a controller driven UI. Well, that's my list. I would love to know what you think about it. Let me know in the comments below. What kind of things would you like to see out of your Steam Deck? Sound off in the comments. I wanna give a special shout out to my friends on Patreon and my YouTube members, without whom I wouldn't be able to do this, so thanks. If you believe in the work that I'm doing and you wanna help this show grow, consider joining the 100 plus other Linux warriors and making a monthly pledge using the links below. Supporters get access to exclusive content like a 45 minute video of our initial Steam Deck unboxing and our first raw impressions available later today. But anyway, I think that's gonna do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Hit that like button to let us know that you wanna see more Steam Deck coverage. And don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date with everything that we're doing here on the channel. I hope you all have a blessed day, and I'll see you guys next time.